Wait a minute, man. Wait a goddamn minute, bro. Free abortions, vasectomies, will be available to DNC attendees in Chicago. Wait a minute. So y'all telling me that they're giving out abortions and vasectomies at the DNC convention in Chicago. Oh, you can't make this shit up, man. Twilight Zone. Attendees at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago will have the opportunity to get a free abortion or a vasectomy just blocks away from the event and vasectomy appointments are filling up fast. I feel like I'm in a twilight zone. Planned Parenthood, Great Rivers, which serves most of Missouri and part of Southern Illinois is sending mobile health center to the Windy City's West Loop to offer reproductive services on Monday and Tuesday. Medications and abortions are reportedly available on both days with vasectomies being exclusively offered Monday. You can't make this shit up, man. Dear Jermaine Dupree and any other that got shit to say about Kamala Harris running for president. I already put this on Twitter, but sometimes tone is misinterpreted with the written word, so I thought I'd say it. Now, Jermaine Dupri posted this rambling nonsense on social media yesterday, and I'm not really sure what this man who cheated on Janet Jackson is asking, but I think the answer is you don't understand how the system works, Jermaine. There are a lot of things people think presidents can do without congressional approval, but people are wrong. Congress has a lot of power. Now, Jermaine, I know you are a successful businessman and CEO, but our government is not a business. It runs on a constitution. And to make laws or spend federal money in this country, you have to follow a set of rules that are enforced by Robert's rules. And people who belong to D9 organizations or basically any organization that has constitution and bylaws, they are very familiar with Robert's rules. But people who own record labels and ice cream companies are not. Additionally, our government is basically run on the honor system. Everybody is supposed to respect and follow and enforce the rules. Republicans do not do this. They exploit the rules so that they can cheat and get rule changes in their favor. They create problems to look like they are the only ones that can solve problems. And if the GOP gets power back this November, they are going to change the rules of how our government works so that they can remain in power permanently. That is why Trump packed the federal courts during his term. That is why he packed the Supreme Court so that they could cheat legally. And there is no boss or CEO that can stop them. Now we, and when I say we, I mean women, I mean indigenous people, I mean black people, I mean Latinos, I mean Asians, I mean the LGBTQIA community, immigrants, we weren't supposed to be included in this government the way our constitution was originally written. That's why they had to write amendments. And everybody is supposed to respect and follow the amendments. And the amendments are what give all those marginalized groups rights. So how do you discriminate against people that the amendments protect? You make new laws that defy the amendments. Who is going to make you stop making new laws? The people you discriminate against? They are poor and they cannot afford to take you to court. And court is the only way we can have laws changed in this country. And even if we did take these fools to court, the federal appeals courts have been packed with MAGA judges by Trump. So is the Supreme Court. So even if you are logically and morally wrong for changing the laws, you will be upheld as legally right in this country with the current uh, government that we have. Trump and the GOP are trying to legally make a slave class in this country, period, point blank. They want to change the laws so that they can oppress us legally and there is nothing we can do about it for generations because the Supreme Court they have now will uphold these laws. They want minorities and women in America to be suckers and slaves in order to make Trump and whomever he and his cronies deem worthy more wealthy. Now, Project 2025 is a real life guide to becoming Gilead from The Handmaid's Tale. And this is not an exaggeration. If you have not looked up what Project 2025 plans to do to anybody who is not a white, heteronormative, Christo-fascist male in this country, you better get your ass on Google and read. For those of you who fell asleep in civics class all the time, two thirds of Congress can override anything a president 
wants to do. With the number of MAGA Republicans in Congress, there will never be an override if they get back in power. Y'all only show up every four years to vote for the president and you refuse to show up every two years in the midterms to give the president the Congress they need to pass legislation they had on their platform or to stop bad presidents from implementing harmful legislation. Since Bill Clinton's second term, we have had hyper-partisan nonsense going on in our Congress. And there are a lot of reasons why that was going on, but it was mostly because Bill Clinton started fixing the mess of Reaganomics. When Bill Clinton was in office, America was in a surplus. Every time we put Republicans in power in our government, we are at a financial deficit and they look to all the poor people to make up the deficit. That's why inflation and our taxes and cost so much while these companies are making record profit. Okay. And too many minorities were benefiting during the nineties. That's why they had it out for Bill Clinton's. And that's why they tried to impeach him over that nonsense that happened with him and Monica Lewinsky. It is not a coincidence that one of the architects of getting Clinton impeached back then is our present sitting uh, Supreme court justice, Brett Kavanaugh. Since 1973, they have been trying to get women back under control because that is when women started receiving the legal right to do things on their own, to have a bank account on your own, to have a credit card on your own, to purchase a home on your own. We could not do that before 1973. And then lots of the provisions in the Civil Rights Act that allowed minorities to vote have expired and they do not want to renew them. That is why they had to present the John Lewis Voting Act because the original Voting Act has expired. These people do not want women or minorities to have rights in this country. They want the government they originally had with white land owning men and they want to do it legally. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself why Rick Santorum's crazy has been trying to force a constitutional convention in this country since damn near Obama's first term because they do not want black people, brown people, Asian people, indigenous people, LGBTQIA people. They do not want us in power in this country, y'all. If we elect Kamala Harris as president, she can't do nothing if we don't give her the House and the Senate she needs to get it done. That's why we say vote down the ballot, vote for all the Democrats and fire the GOP. She needs it in 2024. She needs it in 2026. She's going to need it in 2028. She's going to need it in 2030. You have to keep coming back and voting in the midterms. Okay. But if Trump gets in there, he has enough cult members in Congress to get the rules changed and our rights are done. We will be living in Russia Jr. for the next few generations, not the next few years, the next few generations. I need y'all to remember that Jim Crow laws had to be overturned by the Supreme Court. These did not just start acting right because they had some kind of epiphany about bigotry. The laws changed and then they enforced the laws. That is why they're trying to change them back. Y'all really got to start focusing on the right things, bruh. So all you impressionable people out there who listen to celebrities just because they have money or listen to Jermaine Dupree just because he's famous and made some good bops, do not let a who cheated on Janet Jackson influence you to make a bad decision for your life too. We can actually crush the Republican Party this year because they are broke as a joke, okay? We can crush them and keep working to shape our government the way we want it to look if we participate. This is a slow process, y'all, but you have to participate every year and not just pop out every four years talking and being a contrarian. In summation, please learn how the system works and participate in your government every election. These people are our employees, y'all. It is up to us to hire and fire the people who make the laws that run our lives. And that is what voting is. The hiring process is a zero-sum group project. If you don't show up, the other team is winning. If you vote for a third party that cannot win, the other team is still gaining votes and winning. The only way for you to win is to vote against the who are trying to hurt you. If you do not vote against the incompetent candidate, which is basically the majority of the GOP, America is 
and so is your freedom. Real talk. So all of this nonsense y'all going on and on about, you need to stop it. You need to learn how our system works and you need to vote how and fire the entire GOP. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. What's no. your read on why so many black men, Hispanic voters have found in Trump something to admire, something even to vote for? Well, Madam Editor, I'm glad you asked me that question. For me, the Democratic Party emasculates black men. And I think Hispanic men probably feel the same way. And I say this because they weaponize identity. When and where we enter, who we are, how we identify is important to who we are, just like our fingerprints. But if you're not going to use my identity to advance a social justice cause, and you're just going to use my identity as a blunt force object, now I got a problem. And so what the Democratic Party does, they put black women on a pedestal and they say, we're the mothers of the movement or we save the party. But yet you don't put forth policies that save black babies. You don't put forth policies that deal with the maternal death rate of black women and black babies in the United States of America. You don't do those things that lift and edify. Yes, identity is important. Both parties use it differently. Republicans use it to say that everybody black or brown or of a mixed race is some hot kind of way a DEI hire. They use it to say certain books will be banned. Don't tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about how this country was uh, formulated because you might hurt a uh, white child's feelings by saying that, yeah, chattel slavery existed, and oh, by the way, uh, white powerful folks stole the land from the indigenous people. The so all of those things, Chinese Exclusion Act, I mean, we can go down the list, but Democrats use it in a way that alienates other folks and it offends me. So when I talk to black men across this country, they don't see themselves in this party. It's one thing to recognize the power and prowess of black women and the sacrifices that we make. It is another thing to put us above black men. The black struggle, black men and black women have to be together. We, we, we don't have the luxury to be separated. And so I resent the Democratic Party for doing that. And so black men do not see themselves in the party. That bravado, you know, because we got a kind of masculine energy, and masculine energy is not all bad, but the type of bravado that Trump puts forward is still very much rooted in a hierarchical patri patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men gravitate to that. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. I will literally vote for my neighbor's dog before I vote for that lady. Like, here's my thing. This lady's whole entire campaign is ran on F them kids. Literally, F the kids that you're trying to get rid of that ain't even thought of, ain't even here. And F the kids that are here. F the kids' future. Let's just cloud their, their heads with delusion and confusion. Let's bring the Hollywood demonic evil freak show to America. <sighs> like... They beat this this man's name into y'all so much, which they literally did. They mentioned the name the man's name over seventy five times at the DNC first night. They put so much fear into you that y'all are actually willing to come into agreement with perversion. If Trump was to say that he wanted to mutilate a little girl's body to transition her into a little boy in elementary school, that's when y'all might give a damn. If Trump would have lost over three hundred thousand kids at the border, that's when y'all might give a damn. Like, make this make But no, we only care about our abortions. Like, y'all are literally... And then my thing is, these people are also trying to do gender-neutral bathrooms. And so then y'all have this argument, but we need to keep these abortions, which I don't think anybody can take abortions away. I think, I think that's, you know, I think that is a right women have, right? But it's like, no, we need our choice, our bodies, and what about the women that are great and all this thing? And do y'all not know that those numbers are going to rise with gender-neutral bathrooms? You can't do a background check on a pedophile, a predator, uh, somebody that's on the ex-offender list. Like, we can't do that before we go pee. So, y'all do know those numbers are going to rise. They're going to rise for the kids in school because they're trying to do gender-neutral bathrooms in school so little boys, little girls are not no longer having privacy. And then you got tampons in little boys' bathroom. If Trump would have did that, then y'all will be outraged. This is weird. It's creepy. 
um the demonic democrats they're good at what they do though and i think only i mean i i mean am i just call the abortion bus on wheels if you are attacked and you are just you know you know your your body that we care so much about you know if that that body is 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 taken advantage of in one of these gender neutral bathrooms then just call the abortion bus on wheels and that's all we got for you because do we really care about your body no we just don't want you to keep having children black women do we really care about your body no because we don't care about the diseases that are going to arise with some of these choices like I, i'm just I'm just actually astonished. I'm astonished as to what you got Christians who are saying anything is better than Trump, even if that means going against everything of God, it, even if that means going against everything, even they put so much fear into you that you fear a man more than you fear Jesus. That is insane to me, but that is the work of the devil. So it's like, I'm not surprised. I call them that name for a reason. They earn it. Literally is not hiding that these people are just demonic, just just satanic literally just say to just say in little spawns mm. like I, I don't care like y'all lesser of the two evils i don't know i i i i don't i don't i don't see the other party talking about mutilating kids bro i don't see the other party talking about with all these seventeen thousand different pronouns even the lgbtq is confused that is insane to me. How are we like, I, Kamala got more on her website when she got like 20 something pronouns on her website and no policy. They're able to push so much fear into you that they're able to lie to you, deceive you, tell you what you want to hear, even though you live your life. Oh, the economy is in the best shape. But when you go into Publix, is it? When you go get gas, is it? Oh, we want to keep Americans safe. But then, but then, hey, third world countries. Open all the jails and let all the vicious criminals out and send them right on to America. Because <laughs> we want to keep our country safe. Yeah. Like, I might be, I feel like I am being pranked. I feel like this is the biggest joke of my life. Oh, Americans, we care that the, and we care about the inflation. We want to bring the inflation now, but vote for me first. But illegal immigrants, we got, we got $10,000 in food stamps and five thousand dollars in cash assistance and we want to give out we want to give you guys houses but the american people got you got to vote for me before i can give you a house or give you twenty five thousand dollars to 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 go towards your house but immigrants we got a free house for you come over and live the american dream and americans you just live the nightmare like, I'm just like, I'm just like i feel like i am being pranked bro the like i said the devil is good as good at what he does like i'm not surprised here's the kicker the kicker is y'all thinking this lady is going to stop a war babes the war is just getting started hun oh the war she told you that last night we are preparing the most lethal military uh forces america that is to get the war started babes we just want you to bring down the prices we just want to live what is we fighting for but that is what the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy bro they aren't the name they, they're not stopping a war. The war is just getting started. Y'all are crazy. If y'all think that people are stopping a war. You're insane. And then with this, anything is better than Trump. Even though you thrived under Trump, you, you're fine. You were able to get your abortions. He did not take your rights away. You did not end up on a slave plantation. Even though if you're voting for this lady just because she's black and a woman, you are on the slave plantation mentally. But then, on the other hand, y'all say anything is better than Trump, even though <laughs> employment is trash and you've been searching for a job and you've been working three jobs plus Uber. You can't pay this bill, but you can pay that bill. You can't pay this bill to that bill. Your mental health is trash. You're crying yourself to sleep every single night. But anything is better than Trump because, like, what? Y'all are in a mental emotional abusive relationship with them demonic democrats and you have to let it go you're either going to make history again and we see where that got us nowhere obama was a warmonger too or you're gonna be history <laughs> where the fuck is our money at for the last four years this administration the power that be government has been telling us that we're broke a trillion dollars in debt don nada we don't got no money for no veterans no homeless no children's no infrastructure improvements no student loan forgiveness 
No money to give you all. We done nada. We're broken than the white boy off of trading places. If y'all fucked up and y'all take accountability, we can all recoup and say, you know what, okay, let's switch leadership and figure out solutions. Who all was fucking irresponsible? Time to move on and find solutions. But no, 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 that's not our fucking leadership. My spidey senses start tingling. I put on my thinking cap and I ask myself a pretty fucking reasonable question that deserve a pretty reasonable fucking answer. If we're so broke that you all say we are, where the fuck did you all get 400 plus billion dollars to send to Ukraine? Where the fuck you all getting all this money to send to Israel in this confrontation, which by the way, have been going on for a hundred fucking years years. Ooh, don't get me started on that situation. How do you all have money to fund your lavish lifestyle? Why the fuck do all the politicians go in being broke and come out being multi-millionaires? How do all of them have yachts and boats and mansions and shit? Yeah, you motherfuckers are lying. The math ain't math and the shit ain't making sense. And I think I speak for all of us Americans when I say, ah, motherfuckers can't trick us no more. Now y'all gonna fuck around and make us pull up like Optimus Prime and the fucking Autobots. directly from the whitehousegov.gov page. Fact sheet, the Biden and Harris administration advanced equity and opportunity for Asian Americans. Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islander communities across the country. But she can't do nothing specifically for black people. And all the black people are voting for her. You can't make this shit up. Damn it, every woman I know got two or more kids. Why are we the number one population since we've been here since day one? Huh? How the fuck we not the number one population? Because we vote against ourselves and eat our own and kill ourselves. Got a Planned Parenthood in every neighborhood. Right around the corner from Martin Luther King Boulevard in every neighborhood. But they can't do nothing for us. And these black folks are steady hollering about, I'm going to vote for Kamala. $36 billion. This is from the whitehouse.gov. Don't argue with me. Argue with the fucking people that made it. This the stupid shit I be talking about. Not everything that I'm going on, but I do know I'm not voting for a dictator at all. Don't want a master again for sure. Now I'm going to ask you a simple question without disrespecting you at all. What rights... Did you get back when Donald Trump got out of office? The dictator got out of office. What rights did Joe Biden give you that he took? Name me one. Y'all so fucking stupid. It's a shame you keep repeating the same dumb shit. You forget he was already in office. You wasn't in no motherfucking chains. None of your people went to jail for stupid shit. Name the right that you got back when he got out of office. Because a dictator don't get the fuck out of office. Ask Putin. You want to call a man a dictator and he don't, he couldn't, he not. I, boy, I just want to swing these bitches till I'm fucking tired. I just want to swing these bitches till I'm tired. Now, why should you be offended? You would think, oh, well, yeah, we black people. We supposed to support our black folk. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let me explain something to you. You should be offended beyond report because of the fact that somebody is willing to put someone in seat for their color, even when they're not qualified to do a favor for you. Let me explain to you how the last four years have went up three coming into this four. Let me explain something to you. So for the first three, three years, Kamala has not cared about the black community, okay? Kamala and Biden have been doing everything in their power to support illegal immigrants. They have been coming in this country. They're getting your benefits. they putting their kids. They, the, the, these illegal immigrants are going into your kids' schools. They're in the hood. They're taking over. You're no longer relevant. They're taking over, okay? But then on top of that, okay, they're giving them money. They're giving them credit cards. I mean, they're booking them, taking them. They're, you got immigrants coming straight out of Mexico living better than you did, and your ancestors done built this country up. Boom. Let me explain something to you. That's how valuable you are to the Democrat community, okay? But now, boom. Year four. It's election time. Y'all, we ain't really did nothing for these niggas. 
I guess you got to do something. Uh, let's call up Kirk Franklin. And he comes to the White House. Kirk Franklin went on that stage with them tight shorts or tight suit and that extra low button top that he wears on stage. And he danced and he got a check. And that was for you. They paid him to please you. That's how important you are. When Hillary wants to campaign, she don't actually focus on issues in the black community that are needed. She says, oh, I got hot sauce in my bag, boo. Are you pandering to us? Is it working? Oh, y'all forget. Your memory is terrible. Y'all forget. She said, is it working? That's how valuable you are as a boat. That she don't even got to invest to get your vote. She don't even have to work and put the agenda in and start to show proof to get your vote, black woman, black man. You so you may you you so special to be black. You so special to be black that you don't even you don't even get no benefits for it. We'll just put Kurt Franklin in and let him dance for the day. That'll do. Can you imagine being told to vote for a candidate? for president that's already in office and is guaranteeing to fix all of the problems that they told you didn't exist for the last three and a half years. Kamala Harris says she's the one to fix the border, not Donald Trump, even though the numbers were lower under Donald Trump. But fix what problem? You told us for three and a half years the border was closed and secured and safe. Now we're finding out that's not true. And they've evidently lied about the number of children that have gone missing. This is the same person that tells us they're going to fix the economy. Fix what economy? You told us the economy was booming, the best we've ever seen. You guys have created more jobs and more manufacturing than any president in history as they now just downgraded the jobs numbers yet again. And we're being told by the CEO of Home Depot that the government needs to be honest about what the real jobs numbers look like. See, she wants to put in price controls as if we didn't learn anything from the Soviet Union to control price gouging when inflation due to printing money and spending money is what drove revenues up, which also increased profits because profit margins stayed the same. These are the same people that told you that they're going to fix crime. We were told in the last election that crime was down. It was just a right wing talking point. Then we found out that major cities aren't mandated to report their crime data like they used to. See, these are the same people who told you Joe Biden was mentally sound and physically fit to be the next president. And they were going to do that. But they said that only long enough so that they wouldn't actually have to have a primary and have you vote. Because the last time you had an opportunity to vote for Kamala Harris, you gave her less than 2% of the vote. But pick her because she's going to fix all those problems that don't exist. Going white people for white people. If I was to walk into America right now, open my mouth, show my passport or my driving license, these white people there will treat me better than you. <laughs> you must stay coming out here being mad at minorities in England for no fucking reason at all, even that if we are to have a little opinion that we are entitled to. And the funny thing is, a lot of you don't want to acknowledge why you're so mad at us, so let me tell you. So let me just highlight it for you. Your country's absolutely garbage. And they treat you like garbage. That's why a lot of you are so fucking miserable, bro. But understand very well, it is not the fault of British people, of British minority people. It's not our fucking fault. Listen, love, I hate to burst a little bubble, but here in America, black is black. No matter where you're from, no matter what you sound like, they do not care about your little accent. You are a to them, okay? Please get that understood. And you're talking about our country is dog shit and they treat us like dog shit. We can see how they're treating y'all over there in Europe. Okay, and then y'all always talking about we know where we're from. We're, we know where we're from, but y'all are never there. Y'all are never in your home country. Why are y'all always over in Europe somewhere? Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Why aren't you at home? Y'all saying that Kamala not black, but didn't y'all say that y'all grandma was Indian and that's why y'all had good hair? Don't worry, I'ma wait. Y'all can call me crazy. Y'all can call me delusional. Y'all can call me psychotic. I do not care. But at this point in the presidential election, Donald Trump is literally creating the political Avengers and I am here for it, okay? When I tell y'all the recent endorsements that he have gotten from RFK as well as Tulsi Gabbard is literally going to be the end game for the Democrats themselves, okay? I do not care what Barack Obama had to say on that stage. I don't care what Michelle Obama had to say on that stage, baby. I don't even care what Oprah Winfrey had to say on that stage. They still have not given us any policies. The only thing that they keep giving us is bad mouthing and bad talking Trump. They literally said that man name over 500 times throughout the whole DNC, and we still have not gotten not one policy. And keep in mind, the policies that we did get from her literally originated from Trump, okay? At first, she wanted to tax tips, now she don't. At first she was against the wall, now she's not. 
at this point, y'all, it's time to open y'all eyes. It's time to like really pay attention to what's going on. To all my MAGA fans, to all my MAGA family, please make sure y'all turn up and turn out at this election polls in November because if it's too big, then it cannot be rigged and we will not have the same outcome that we had in 2020. Let's go MAGA family. So I just watched a clip on, on Newsmax of Kamala Harris's campaign wanting to change the rules of the debate for September 10th with Donald J. Trump. No, no, no. The news, the, the rules that she wants to set is she wants to be able to have a sit down debate, wants to read off notes, and then she wants to have an opening statement. That is not how the, the rules, prior rules went, and that is not what normal presidential and vice presidential debates go. You either come off the dome or don't come at all. Why do we have to set new rules for these Democrats, these weak, dysfunctional, soft Democrats. All they want to do is cheat, 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 cheat. If she cannot come off the dome and have a regular conversation with on a debate with Donald J. Trump, then how in the world she's going to be able to have a conversation with ABC, NBC, CNN, and Fox? How is she going to be able to have a conversation with Putin and Kim Jong-un and President Xi of China? How so in 2020, Trump put a cap on the price of insulin at $35. And then later, four years later, Kamala Harris says that this was her and Biden's idea and that Trump was trying to take that away. You got to see it to believe it. Check this out. It will cap cost to just $35 a month per type of insulin. And some plans may offer it free. So for everybody that is getting ripped off, and paying tremendous prices, senior citizens, is a tremendous uh, saving. It is President Biden and I that took on Big Pharma and finally capped the cost of insulin for our seniors at $35 a month. But Donald Trump and his running mate intend to get rid of our $35 cap on insulin. So she's stealing Trump's ideas, making it her, making it her own, but then she's demonizing the guy that she stole from. I mean, that's just pure selfish evil. I mean, this isn't an accident that she did. This is what, this is the thing that bothers me is that this isn't an accident at all. Like she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's saying. She knows it's not her idea. She's taking it. And also she's, she's taking this idea, stealing from Trump, but she thinks you're stupid. You're too stupid to know that it wasn't her idea. This is another thing too. People that lie like this a lot, it shows how smart they think they are and how dumb they think you are. Because if she didn't think you were dumb, if she thought you were smart, she wouldn't lie because she knew that she couldn't trick you into thinking that she's telling the truth. So a person that does this like her is a freaking liar. She's full of crap. There's no truth in her. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to come on here and get some shit out my chest because for about the past, I don't know, uh, two weeks maybe, um, I've seen a lot of black celebrities and media personalities and so-called journalists uh, make it their business to try to shame and denigrate and shit on and uh, insult the intelligence of black men because they don't want, they don't want to vote for Kamala Harris. They are actively out here villainizing black men for not wanting to vote for Kamala Harris. And I said it before and I will say it again. They think they own us. They think they own our fucking vote. They want us to believe that we have some sort of obligation to them that when it's right for them, we should play identity politics and vote for her because she's black. And now they're pushing a the narrative that we're dumb, that we're uneducated, we're misinformed. We don't know what the fuck is going on. And the crazy thing about it is, it's the complete opposite. The people who are running away from Kamala Harris are the people who are informing themselves, who are researching, that actually know what the fuck is going on and just not letting themselves be told any goddamn thing. That's the reality of the situation. So, you know, I just was, it's, it's astonishing to me to see it though, where you have these uh, people, they sending out these black women and these boot licking ass men, right? The Van Joneses, the Bakari Sellers, the Roland Martins, right? The D.L. Hughleys, even Plies. And it's a whole bunch of them who are trying to shame black men for thinking for themselves because that's all they doing. We're thinking for ourselves. They're just like when a slave owner didn't want you to learn how to read.
Because once you learn how to read, you have knowledge, and knowledge is fucking power. And that's the problem. No, watch MSNBC. Don't do no thinking. Let us tell you what to think. Huh? Don't you want to see a black woman president? Don't you want to see somebody who was belonged to a sorority? Don't you want to see a black woman get sworn in by a black woman on Martin Luther King's birthday? A whole bunch of token shit that don't mean a goddamn thing. That's what they want us to vote for. Y'all out your motherfucking minds, man. I was listening to Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley talking about in regards to black men. They not doing the right research. What? Who the fuck you talking to, Ricky Smiley? They not doing the right research. So because we're thinking for ourselves, we're not doing the right research. We're supposed to listen to you. That's the right research. We're and we're going to just keep seeing more and more of this shit. Joy Reid telling black people, you're going to look weird. What, 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 what fuck we in the sixth grade? Don't nobody give a fuck about looking weird. We worrying about the issues, the economy, our communities, our children, our futures. What the fuck you talking about looking weird? See, that's the dumb shit. See, that's for weak-minded people. And they just going to keep going, bro. You, you, all the, the narratives is going to keep going. Oh, sellout, coon, traitor. Oh, you hate black women and all that cool shit. Bakari and Van Jones up on CNN crying and boohooing. Don't nobody give a fuck. Too smart to fall for that shit, man. So y'all could keep rolling that shit out. We gonna keep standing 10 motherfucking toes down. The fuck out of here. Love the black man until he wants to think for himself, until he wants to form his own opinion, until he stops seeing himself as a victim, and then he becomes the enemy. And I'm watching this shit happen in real time. It's happening right now. And all you gotta do is keep your eyes open, pay attention, and you can see it clear as day. This shit is real. So I'm saying all that to say if you an actor, a rapper, a comedian, or, or anything else. You're not going to dictate our decision by calling us names and trying to make us feel bad. Fuck you. I leave TikTok for a few weeks and I come back and it's burning down. First, we got this creator, the Dorito dude. He had a bad take, didn't want to take responsibility. And now he crashed out and he telling black people what books to read. Then we have this creator coming after this creator because she said this black woman was voting for genocide because she was going to vote for Kamala Harris. Oh, you think I'm light skinned? Yeah, everybody be saying that. No, I'm actually Arab. But like, I feel like I can still say the N word. Then we got this creator right here saying that everybody in the United States is colonizers and she want us black people to die in a revolution for the Palestinian people in the United States. I'm trying to figure out how black people are colonizers because we only 13% of the population. We don't have no power to colonize anything. My question is, who are we supposed to vote for? If we vote for Trump, it's genocide. If we vote for Kamala Harris, it's genocide. I'm trying to figure out how we supposed to vote and be in support of the Palestinian people, but also vote on policies that will benefit us in the United States as well. Us as Americans, we also have to vote for for the best interest of ourselves. So I'm trying to figure out what the plan is. It's really damned if we do and damned if we don't. If we don't protest or we don't support in the way people think we should, then it's not good enough. So I just need to understand what you want us to do. We're always welcoming and supportive of everybody else. But as soon as a little bit of time passes, it always seems like everybody turns their back on us. I leave TikTok for a few weeks. I woke up feeling good. First thing these Democrats keep telling you about the fucking inflation that's going on. Either the economy doing good or they fucking ain't. Either it's Bidenomics or it fucking ain't. But they keep saying she passed the Inflation Act. She passed the Inflation Act. Do you feel uninflated? Huh? Do you feel uninflated? Because last time I checked, a Snickers bought 305. Yeah, I don't feel uninflated. My rent went up $200. I don't feel uninflated. And they always say the same stupid ass shit. You, you need to do some research. Yeah. Do some research. Because we're on the Trump's tax code right now. And when you do the research, you find out it's Bidenomics. And we are proud of our economics. This is how the bitch said. We are proud of our economics. This is what the calculator here said. We are proud of our economics. Hell, Joe Biden didn't know that his policies wasn't working until he did an interview in July. Y'all are batshit crazy. Y'all are batshit crazy. Stop trying to scale a warrior. I'm a fucking warrior. Get your whole ass behind me. Since you think somebody fits to come kill you and put you in slave. Get your whole ass behind me. I'm a real warrior. I'll protect your puss ass. Would you call the border secure? The border is secure. You're confident this border is secure? 
We have a secure border. After decades in law enforcement, I know the importance of safety and security, especially at our border. As president, I will bring back the bipartisan border security bill that he killed, and I will sign it into law. So wait a minute. First, the border was secure. Now the border is not secure, and it's because Trump killed the bill? <laughs> Listen, all these idiots gonna go vote for her. Y'all about to fuck this country up. I get it. I've been gone for too long. I get the passion now. I get the we want to call people libtards. Listen, y'all are crazy. The mall is open, but ain't nobody shopping. A made man, that's the top tier level of the mafia. You couldn't be a made man unless you had both parents who were directly from Italy. You had to trace your, your parents back to the homeland or, or your, your, your relatives back to the homeland um, on both sides. You couldn't be a made man because they understood cultural cohesion and you needed trust. And you couldn't have people who had dual allegiances. That's why in the movie Goodfellas, the Henry Hill guy, he was half Italian, but half Irish, and he talked about how he couldn't be made. They couldn't make him a made man, and rightfully so, because he was the one, when he got pinched, he snitched on everybody. You see? And then they had to put him in witness protection. So the same thing with lineages. When people have dual allegiances or just an allegiance to some other nation, you, the trust factor isn't going to be there. Just like with Kamala. Let's look at Kamala. Perfect example. Kamala cosplays as a black person and a foundational black American person. Is Kamala to be trusted? Let's be real. Well, all the the, the fake Kamala shills. And whenever people sit up here and just go hard in the paint for Kamala, you are 100% on somebody's payroll. Nobody genuinely can sit up here and say that Kamala has done something worthy of any type of praise. Let's talk real. That's why all of the Kamala butt lickers, when they try to big up Kamala, it's all about shaming us on our ancestry and lineage. They always bring up the black thing. Because you can't bring up any policies that this woman has that's commendable or something that should be upheld. She ain't got them. You can't big up her personality. She doesn't have a personality like that. There's nothing about her that you can really big up. There's nothing about Kamala Harris that justifies anybody going hard in the paint for her and her policies. Nothing. It's all a bunch of symbolic gibberish and talking points sent down from the DNC. That's why nobody can give a real, honest, good faith um, assessment of why any of us should support Kamala Harris, other than Trump and them going to bring Project 2025. We got to do something now. Trump is horrible. We got to support Kamala Harris. <clears throat> we is all black. We got to support Kamala Harris because we black. You see? And I'm saying, hell no. That's all cap. Let's get um, Burke Griffin. Let's get Burke in the building. Burke, and then we'll get Avian, I think that's his name. And then we'll get, um, let me see. Well, let's get Burke. Burke, you in here? Burke Griffin, Burke Griffin, you want to unmute your microphone, or did you ask to get on by mistake? You must have did it by mistake. Avion, hop on, Avion. Hey, baby, I just wanted to say, you hold know on. me. Hold on, hold on. You say baby? I called you baby. Um, okay. Where I come this from? This is where not I come, come from. from? Oh, no. That's okay. No, no, dude. I don't know where you're from. You're from Bussy Land, and we don't do that over here. Dudes don't call up talking about some hey baby to some dude. All right, where are you from, by the way? Real quick, I don't like that. Where are you from, man? Avion, where are you from? Avion, unmute your microphone. 
Sorry, bro. Uh, thank you. Where are you from? Um, I'm from? I'm from Australia. Okay, well, y- y'all know better than that. You yeah, I do. Hey, don't call yeah. no grown ass nigga baby. They don't wrong with you. Well, apologies. All right, what's on your mind, man? Because you didn't rub me the wrong way. What's on your mind? Okay, you know what? I really, I've been following you for a very long time. I've been following other people as well for ages. This is the first time that I've ever actually spoken here in you, when you have um, led it. And I agree everything that you said. Um, every time I've, I've come into this, because no one knows where we actually come from. And that's not what I want to say. We all... No, no, no. Get your ass out of here, man, and go find you a warm dude. You're just trying to talk to a man tonight, man. I don't know what you're talking about. You ain't saying nothing. You weird, bro. Um, Burke, hop on, man. Goddamn weirdo. Burke, what's up, man? Okay, Burke, you ain't saying nothing, dude. And the, the moist Australian dude. Okay. Let me get Abyss, the Abyss in here. All right, Burke, I'm going to just get you out the paint, man. I don't know what you're trying to do. Um, Abyss, what's happening? Hey, I'm actually surprised I got in here. Um, so why, why are you surprised, bro? Well, it's 1,002 people watching. Not sure how many people requested. And okay. uh, this is kind of my first time uh, speaking to you. I've been following your page for a little bit. And I just wanted to ask, not, I'm not in complete opposition of everything you're saying, but I do find a couple of talking points interesting. And that's like with uh, just Kamala Harris and her ethnicity, right? Yes, I mean, yes. I understand it's very important that, you know, we have uh, leaders that, you know, claim to be FBA or Black or... <sighs> I should rephrase that. We want to see as Americans, as black Americans, we want to see our black leaders have some FBA lineage, right? Yeah. But with Kamala Harris in particular, I mean, she was born here. Otherwise, she wouldn't be eligible to run for president, right? So she has had what we would consider the black experience. Although, no, she did not descend from people... You don't think what so? Black experience, oh no, what black experience did she have other than going to an HBCU? Well, I, I'm not completely sure. I haven't dug up on her life, but I guess Then why did you say that, sir? Then you, you said it. <laughs> You're the one who said it. Well, I mean, so, I don't... I mean, when have you ever asked a black person, hey, what's your black experience? Like, you don't... There's, there's not a checklist that they have. They have experiences. They go to sleepovers... And they realize everybody's white or they realize that they can't swim in the pool the same as everybody else. Now, Kamala's hair might be different from everyone because like she's half Indian or whatever. But like, I don't think any of that really matters because at the end of the day, her skin is fair, just like ours. And people. No, no, go ahead. No. Yeah, we're not doing the whole everybody with melanin. We all the same. Because no, you got Myron Gaines out here who's darker Where than you me. Where you from? I'm from Atlanta. Okay, okay. hold on, Jess. We're gonna get you soon. About the house. Okay. Who are you again? Because I don't know you. Who are you? That's who is she talking to me? I'm talking about the house. Yeah, no, I ain't talking to him. I'm talking about the house. This is my second the... time being on oh, here. Me. You be all rude to everybody. Don't let them say their oh. opinion. But we listen to you oh, talk. Just... So who are you? Well, Jessica, you um, um, you hear me talking to this other gentleman. Okay, right? but my name ain't Jessica. Okay, well, but just because somebody black, don't mean they gotta vote for her because she's black. That's what you I think. It's everybody' opinion. Well, who they want to vote for? So I think you're wrong for that. Point blank. Period. I, you think I'm wrong? Yeah, for what? I would because agree. you saying point because just... she black, so the oh. black people won't vote for her because she black. I don't agree with That's that. That's what the fuck yeah. you said. And I'm, the only okay, reason why I'm cussing is because you be cussing. Hold on, hold on now, slow down. You're going to watch that little potty mouth now. Okay, let's do that. First of all, no, no, no. This ain't the Section 8 office. Okay, let's do that. Let's, let's calm that down. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me deal with you for a minute. You're not going to do that. 
okay? You are not about to get an EBT card right now, so you're not going to call up here just talking any kind of way, Jerrica. All right. You're going to have to articulate yourself, and you're going to have to have some decorum, okay? Now, go ahead, Jerrica. Now, what are you, what's your whole thing? I don't even know what you're babbling about, ma'am. Unmute your microphone. Okay, but see, we got to listen to you. I listened to you yesterday. I was at work on my break. I listened to you talk about something, and you was cussing people out. You just told that man he called you boo. No, no I wasn't. But I it's cool me. for you to cuss somebody out. No, no, I don't know. Slow, ma'am. Slow that. Slow that little section eight mouth down. I wasn't cursing nobody out because I don't do that. I don't curse people out. I wasn't cursing anybody out. So what are you talking about, ma'am? You're just saying stuff, Jerrica. What are you talking about? Unmute your microphone, ma'am. Jerrica, unmute your microphone. Are you still babbling? She's no, probably still no, talking. There you no, you keep on putting me on mute or okay. something, but listen, you talking about your Section 8 right. ass and shit. I ain't never no Section right. 8. You, you here? You, is you black or something? Or are you just down in all black people because you got a little bit of money or something? I don't understand that. You just could say it out Section 8 ass. My Section 8 ass. You're wrong for yeah, that. I ain't about to listen to your bullshit. Because, because you sound unarticulate and hood radish, man. That's what I'm saying. You sound very hood radish. Okay, and that's why I'm saying that, ma'am. And I still haven't understood the gist of what you're even babbling about. You, you're not very good at articulating yourself, ma'am. You're just babbling and saying stuff. And you said that people shouldn't vote for folks just because they're black. I actually agree with you. And you're babbling so much, you don't understand that I agree with you on that. You just so, call me a hood rat because yeah, of the way I talk. A hood, a hood rat, yes. That's a hood rat. Yes. May God I, bless you, because you, you ain't nothing but the devil. You talk kindly about shit, but you ain't nothing but the devil, honey. You call me Section A ho or a rat. Ma'am, I'm looking at your pictures. The devil is the person who sold you that clip on ponytail. That's the devil, okay? You're too old for baby hair. Oh, I ain't never wear no clip on ponytail. To, that's the African. Uh, sweetie, you're too old for baby hair and a clip-on ponytail. You look like a former... You got the wrong person, baby. I pay $200 for my hair African braided. Oh, yeah? Man. I don't wear ponytails. I want wigs or nothing. But if I do, <laughs> why is you judging somebody else? There is uh, the judging shit. You were second mate, clip-on ponytail. Your mom probably had clip-on ponytail when she oh, had you. Man. Your sister probably got a clip-on ponytail, but you ain't talking shit about her? But I'm looking at man. you... I'm looking uh, at, uh, I bet you a million dollars. Ma'am, ma'am. Ain't no, ain't no wig. Ain't no ponytail that's clipped. Ma'am, you're a very big back. All right? You're very big back and you got contact lenses. <sighs> and you got a very strong face. You look like a light-skinned Lou Rawls in the face. Oh, Jesus Christ, I got hazel eyes, baby. Oh, Jesus ma Christ. Oh, my Jesus Christ, baby. Ma'am, you got contact lenses. You got on contact lenses and struggle edges, ma'am. All right? The struggle is real, beloved. There you go, judging somebody. I'm not judging, ma'am, but your I... edges look like your edges look like chocolate dipping dots, ma'am. I have to say something, ma'am. There has to be an intervention here. We have to do something about this, ma'am. Listen this... here. I'm not about to argue with you. On Jesus no. Christ, my eyes are crazy. Some game, and you got your boobs all in the camera. Ma'am, boobs and belly don't go together, ma'am. Okay. Your mama probably had it. Your daughter. Ma'am, ma'am, you, you're trying to get somebody to lift that stomach up and go up in that nasty JJ, and that's why you're upset. No, you're not taking any offers, ma'am. There you go, judging somebody. I'm judging, beloved, but your your energy is very hostile for somebody who's strong in the face, ma'am. Your your face is too strong for this hostile energy. You need to be humble, ma'am. You need to be cooking a nigga something. Yep. I just go, find somebody, go find somebody to cook something for instead of eating all the food and being hostile. You're not cute enough for hostility. Your mama, your mama, you know, how about that? You need humbleness in your life, okay? Not with that strong face, beloved. Okay, your that's mama, all. How about that? You keep no, on muting me. You keep on muting me though. Every time I say something. No, but so no, you no, said no, my no, eyes are fake. I get it from my mom and my dad. It, this no, no, you got I that. I my mama dad, my hazel eyes, baby. No, just... you got you got that from lens crafters, ma'am, and that really didn't help you in that strong face. You dig the hazel eyes? You look like a saber tooth hood rat. It just makes you look more ugly and exotic. 
okay? And that's not a good thing, beloved. So I'm trying to have an intervention here. You you need to have the right disposition for your facial structure. You just don't have the right disposition. Your mama. You keep on muting me, though, but I came out the I'm, pussy I'm, with some I'm, eyes, I'm, baby. I'm, came out the pussy with hazel eyes, baby. No, no, so, no, no, no. But you hear, you you discussing about the truth or whatever and all that. You don't even know the truth. You judging people. You judging What's people of uh, looking on the outside, baby. I bet you two million dollars. My hair long as hell. I ain't never wore no motherfucking wig or no fake ass ponytail. That's okay. the end. Now nah, because you looking at some shit, I don't know. But I don't give a fuck, ma'am. Ma I don't give a fuck what you saying. And shit on my <laughs> body, fake as fuck. I know. But ain't nothing. You because you got ma'am, ma'am, and you got one of them weird bills. I'm looking at more of your pictures. You got a big stomach and no ass, and that's why you're probably hostile. My you ass have... is big, and it's no. not fake. No, it's ass big is... enough for me. It's good enough for me. I don't buy no fake ass or titties. It's good enough for me. But you say, ma'am, your ass look like groove. There the... you go, judging a female, judging some. Yes, ma'am, your ass is very funny looking. You got ass like a minion. Your ass is horrible. You you very bad built, ma'am. You're hostile and bad built, ma'am. You're built like a weeble wobble. You're built like a musty teletubby. What's wrong with you, ma'am? You got to get it together, beloved. You can't be this hostile with that bad build. Well, the niggas like it. Famous rappers like it. So yeah. Yes, niggas in jail who need somebody to bring care packages to them. Yes, you look like the kind of chick who helps smuggle drugs into prisons. Yes, you are a drug mule or something. Yeah, they always but get I them. probably did. I probably yes, did. They, yes, they get bad built broads like you to snuggle in drugs in that bad body because it already looks like you got a kilo of cocaine in your stomach. So, yes, it can just slip on through the cracks. About cocaine. Bitch, you look like you do cocaine. How about yeah. that? Yeah, you, you, you can How smuggle about drugs. That? How under, about that? How about that? To that How big that? back. <laughs> you, can, you, you can hide all types of narcotics in there, beloved. Anyway, Jerrica, what what city are you in? You're in Atlanta, by the way, dear. No. I don't uh, even know who you is. I should have never got on here, but I'll be listening to the way you It's okay. You, 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 you know, why did you like, get in? If you, how did, wait, how do you, you don't want nobody to talk to your mama like that. You don't wanna... you know, why are you in here? You don't know who I am. You clearly know who I am. I don't follow you. I don't like following weird, strong-faced people with bad bills. So uh, you follow me, ma'am. You're in my space, so how do you not know who I am, beloved? No, I don't know who you is. No, yes, well, ma'am, exactly. I know who I you are. I might follow somebody, and somebody follow you, and I follow you. I, so, I know I don't who you are. Man. I know who you are. No, you don't. You know shit about you. Do, do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. Everybody knows the Muffin Man who lives on Hood Rat Lane. So yes, you're the the Muffin Man. That's how you build a like you a big ass. Muffin. You talk like about big, people like that's like a big ass brand muffin with feet. That's what you're built like. So you're the muffin man. So we all know the muffin man. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Jerrica. <laughs> oh, she left. Okay. All right. Oh, right. Let me get Major back in here. Yeah. With that horrible shape, talking crap. Major, what's up, brother? Man, you know, that's Jerrica Janae Bims. You know, we 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 work quick over here. Okay. Uh, Section eight, shawty, you know, welfare <laughs> queen who sells hot plate, hot struggle plates, right? <laughs> <laughs> she sells, she sells, three, yeah. she sells hot struggle plates, marked up the price in a house that smelled like wet pit bulls and backwoods. <laughs> 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 but look, got the audacity to, to overcharge you for a plate. Talking about this homemade. <laughs> Good lord, this the struggle is real, man. Right. She ain't. Hey, hold on, let me tell you this. So I did a little recon, right? Yeah. Found out that's one of fly. That's one of the little plies busted babies. Uh oh. So she retweets a lot of ply stuff, and she's always in his timeline. See, we work quick over here. You got to yeah. be more strategic and quick witty with this stuff. But yeah. She's one of Ply's friends, and so I believe Ply's probably sent her over here. Yeah, just like, just like oh boy, uh, Luke Campbell sent them other people after you too. Oh yeah, oh yep. yeah. So that's what well, that is. Good looking out on that. Yeah, I was wondering where this weird chick comes from. Okay, all right, Jerrica, did Ply send you over? Let me let me finish talking to my brother, the Abyss. 
Go ahead, Abyss. Yeah, uh, Derek is gone. Sorry, the Abyss thing's a, a little, like, gamer thing. Like, I'm not a heavy gamer, oh. but I also don't want this page associated with my real life. Um, so that's just a nickname. But, um, yeah, I was just talking about uh, Kamala and her lineage and what that has to do with uh, our FBA population and the interests of um, Black Americans. Now, I know we don't vote as a monolith. And I believe we would have more power if we did. However, I don't want to take away from the individuality of everyone, including people like yourself, who right. typically aren't, uh, you know, you don't typically fall in the stereotype of a black Democrat or what have you. Right. Um, right. Yeah, totally lost myself in all of that um, j uh, jargon. I, I honestly don't even know where to start, but... I do want to ask you one question. Go ahead, brother. Do you think Trump has an honest chance of winning this election? Oh, yeah. Yes or no? He does. Oh, yes, he does. Really? He absolutely does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has a chance of winning. What makes you say that? Because well, I, Trump, well, yes, yes. Obviously, it's 50-50. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because but I believe his... Post, and I believe... not. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I keep cutting you off. My bad. I'm, I'm just going to get this out. Um, historically, elections have been won by people that raise the most money in modern elections, that is not, mm -hmm. you know, some war, some general, you know, especially George Washington, Ulysses S. Grant, uh, Eisenhower, you know, those folks. Um, I don't think Trump has raised the most money and the amount of time that Kamala raised just as much money as Trump's Trump has right now for his, uh, for his campaign in particular was raised in a matter of less than a week at that 72 hours. And I just don't think, you know, cause I'm not one to, you know, say I'm completely on one side. I, I, I would consider myself an independent and right. I don't think Trump has the ability to win over independence anymore, but I'm gonna let you talk. Yeah, um, well, the thing is um, the corporate sector they're the ones giving Kamala a lot of money. They have a vested interest in Kamala and the Democrats winning because there's a lot of things from the corporate structure and the liberal Hollywood structure. They're giving a lot of money on that end. So it's coming from the top, a lot of that money. It's not on the oh, grassroots. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's be yes. very clear. And Trump has been very critical of some of the corporate people and especially the, the liberal media. He's been very critical of them. But Trump does have a lot of on the ground support. He has a very strong base. And if Trump can peel off some of the black votes, just a very small fraction, that will swing this thing for real, for real. And the thing is with Kamala, they can only hide her for so long. They're going to try to hide her as much as they can because they know she doesn't talking and speaking about issues. That's not her strong point. You see? No, so, no, she definitely, you, like you were saying, you can't dig up a personality on her. I, I think you can dig up a personality, but you, you, you were saying, which I agree with, um, you can't really understand her exact stance on a couple of issues. Right. right. She, and I know she doesn't stand on anything. She just babbles and they know that's a weak point. So the only thing that the media has done and the Democrats have done is just attack Trump, just like at the DNC. Everything mm -hmm. was about attacking Trump, attacking Trump to get the focus off her and her lack of personality. So I don't know if they can keep that charade up for so long. And if Trump really does some real grassroots stuff and holler at some of the black voters and really get a, a significant number of the black vote, that's going to be a problem for the Democrats. That's why they're upset with me for even putting an olive branch out for the Democrats and the Republicans to bring Kamala over here, to bring Trump over here, to have a sit down with me so that we can talk about what can be done for the black community. Because they know if Trump sits down with me, that might be a problem for the Democrats because that will win, possibly, that would win over a lot of black voters. So... Yeah, I think a personal <laughs> conversation with you, like he has been doing with a couple of other uh, celebrities, would be really cool because um, I think he definitely dropped the ball at the uh, NA, NABJ. I think yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah. The NA, they, they were they were working like Democratic shills, you know, so that was kind yeah. of an thing, and it was really in bad faith. And I don't really like how that went down because that's not real journalism. If you're a journalist, you don't shill for a particular um, 
party. That's not what you do. You, you see, you got to be. Well, objective. I don't think they were doing exactly that. I think they were just coming at him how anybody that is critic is is a critic and is critical about the things that um, our politicians do. Now, I would no. agree if Kamala was sitting there. If I, I would no, no, agree if Kamala was sitting there, I don't think they would have done the same thing. Right, right, right. Let's be. They were attacking. They wouldn't have done that to Kamala. They, whenever they get around Kamala, they give her softball questions. Like, what's it like? What do you and Doug like to eat? It's real softballish. Um, they were attacking Trump. They were attacking him. Um, and even Steve Harvey, when he was interviewing Kamala, he was saying, "I'm a, I, I, I ain't going to be asking her a tough question. I'm going to throw you a law so you can alley who, you know, yeah, you know, so they, they're all acting as shields for the Democratic Party. So it is what it is. Um, let me get my sister Brooke in the building. Sister Brooke, what's up, beloved? Hello. Good night. How are you? How are you, sis? I'm good. Thanks so much for asking. Um, I just have a couple of points. Um, yes. Oh, before I forget, though, before I get to my points, there's a reparations meeting. Um, what is it exactly called? New York State County Community Commission on Reparations Remedies Public Meeting tomorrow at 1.30 in Albany. Oh, cool. I don't know how to post things in the, on the Jumbotron, so I, I, I'll, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> okay. But I'll post the link on, on my Twitter. Um, but my points. Um. Yes. I wanted to say that um, the first thing is um, when he was talking about um, didn't uh, Kamala have the black experience? Number one, if you can flip flop your races, that's not the black experience in America. We cannot change races. We can't be one race on Monday and another race on Tuesday and another race on Wednesday. That's not the black experience. So that alone would, you know, discount her experience from being the same as ours. Yes, indeed. Um, I also wanted to um, make a point that um, I mentioned this before about the Democrats um, basically have a history of faking donors. Um, we have to remember that um, when Donna Brazil was the head of the DNC, they were broke. They were bankrupt. The DNC was bankrupt. And um, it was Black Lives Matter who saved them because they were funneling the donations from Black Lives Matter during the George Floyd protests to the Democratic Party. Like I said, in, in New York, we see what our Democratic mayor has been doing and what they have revealed on him, how, how they were faking donors, um, Big, it would come from one huge donor, and then they would take all their employees and force them to be donors as well, wow. like giving them money and things like that. Um, and then one more point is when you were talking about softball questions, child, <laughs> she tried to have a sit down with Angela Rye. Now, you know, Angela Rye is on her side, right? Yeah. And Angela Rye asked her who was her favorite rapper alive. And she said Tupac again. And oh. Angela Rye was like, somebody alive, like girl, like, and Angela Rye was like, this is not even a hard question. And she said, Angela, move on. Wow. Move on. She wow. couldn't even do that right. So yeah, they're gonna keep trying to hide her because she can't, she, 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 she can't even take the lob. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, this woman does not have no black experience. There is no black experience with this woman because she ain't from our culture. That's just the bottom line. That's the bottom line. All right. Let's get um, Mookum X. Mookum. A lot of people in here. Shout out to everybody in here. We got um, damn near 1,400 people in this lovely space in the middle of the night. Mookum X. What's up, Mookum? All right. All right, let's get Lando with Mookum, and then we'll get Lando. Let's get Lando. What up, though, Flex, man? It seemed like it's a full moon tonight with, the, with these callers, dog. Oh, God, it's a day off the chain, man. I said at 3 in the morning. It's wild. But to explain what my man said, he's like, okay, what do we mean by her black experience? So first, when you look her up and understand her history, first you have a mom that is East Indian. So right. you don't get that. So number one, she's an immigrant. Next, you have a dad that is a Jamaican. He is an immigrant. Yep. Her, their family moved to Canada. 
So you're going to school in a good percentage of your life. You went out the country. And if you ever been in Canada, there's a lot of immigrants. You yeah. come back home. And when you decide to get married, you choose a white man. So mm-hmm. and you can marry whoever you want. But when you look at everything, if you look at all she's been around immigrants, her parents are immigrants. When she get in office, if she become president, what type of what type of laws and bills do you expect her to sign? She's yeah. going to be pro immigration. Is going to completely hinder us. And when she was on a Breakfast Club and Charlemagne asked her, "Do you support reparations?" and she clearly told us, "No, I'm not going to do anything specifically for Black people." And the mm-hmm. last thing before I land my plane. So reading her book, right? So she did the audible version of her book. She goes for about 30 minutes straight articulating on how black people has been systematically, you know, hindered in the legal system. She's just like, oh, you know, black people is more likely to get poured over. Black people more like for 30 minutes straight. So if you're going to tell us how educated you are, on what's going on because you're in the legal system so you you understand it but to go on a breakfast club and say i'm not going to do anything directly for so she should be number one reparation advocate if you think about it so that's to answer my man question she don't have no black experience real talk and also what she does and this is i found this was despicable what she did she'll talk about the experience that we've had as foundational black Americans. And then she'll flip it just like she did with the Freedmen's Bank, talking about the Freedmen's Bank, talking about how our ancestors were finessed out of their money with the Freedmen's Bank. And then she flipped it into, well, the the idea of the Freedmen's Bank was for everybody to have economic freedom and Everybody. So today, Blacks and Latinos and Asians, we're going to do this for everybody. So she uses our history and our suffering and the things that happened to us that we fought for in our lineage to empower everybody. It becomes a lift-all program. And you know those lift-all programs. When you lift everybody else up, that means everybody gets to stay on top of us and we only get the crumbs that trickle down from everybody else eating. That's why those Liptal programs, you gotta stop going along with them. Let these people explain what the programs are. And when they start talking about minority, distressed communities and all of that stuff, that's the trick bag. Um, Number one to you, hop in. Yes, sir. Thank you for letting me on. Yes, sir. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing, doing all right, man. Um, one thing that I've noticed, uh, is that SBA spaces and things like that. Yeah. I disagree with a lot of the shit. Uh, not a lot. Some of the shit people say and different artifacts they bring up and everything else. Like what? Uh, I like CRU. <laughs> like he, he's in the space right now. Uh, we, we've talked about different things and he sent me some different um, things and it's not like I, I like I said I disagree but I can't prove him wrong motherfuckers come with facts alright hold on hold on let's watch the language by the way because we got young people in here oh so. I'm sorry sir my, go, bad. Let's watch. my bad my bad now, now, now you a white guy by the way uh, I guess you could say that I don't know my dad looks like Montel Williams oh, really yeah he had a natural where, afro bro where's he from uh, so supposedly we're Hispanic, but he don't look like any of my family, man. Gene Skip. What, what so part that, of South- that, that might be Moorish. That's, okay. Yeah. That's what part of what part of South America are they from? Uh, no, no, not South America. So we're we're from we're from America, sir. Okay, but they're Hispanic, so that means they're from somewhere either South America, or Central America, or the Caribbean. Which one? Mm, no, it's Hispanic is from the Iberian Peninsula. No, that's Spanish. That's just Spanish. That's His- Hispanic. Hispanic is here. Where here are they from? If you look at history, you'll know that they did... Whoever they are, <laughs> they changed the words. Hispanic is 
Iberian Peninsula. It's Spain. No, 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 no. The people I've been over, I've been to Spain. Nobody there calls themselves Hispanic. They just, no, they don't. No, they don't because they don't have to. Right. The people over here do. So what part yeah. of the Western Hemisphere is your family from, sir? The Dixie Crest and all that shit. No, no, um, no, no. What part of South or Central America is your family from? Neither. We actually came directly to America from, from Spain. No. Yeah, we did. Oh. Yeah. When did they, when we did are they, Hispanic. Because you don't have people immigrating from Spain over here in large numbers anymore. So no, when did, not when anymore. Did they, not anymore. So what do you, okay, when did they I'm come? I'm from New Mexico, bro. If that helps you out. Are you, are you a Mexican? No, they hate me. Your people didn't immigrate here from Spain. Yeah, they did. What year? Uh, before America was America. Okay, you just babblings. Okay, uh, you're not going to see. I'm babbling. babbling. No, okay, not. you're not going to sit your ass here lying. Okay, this is a Cuban or something. You're not going to sit here lying now. You're not going to sit here lying. Okay, because he's just trying to make up his lies as he go along. This is like some kind of Cuban or something or Colombian. People didn't come over here. They didn't immigrate here from Spain. Well, they didn't. Have they been here? Uh, no. That ain't true. That is not true. You wouldn't be in the United States. It's very rare. The, the Spanish came, but most of them went in uh, to the Caribbean and Central America and South America. That's where they settled mostly. And over in California and all of that, when it was a Mexican territory, uh, he's capping. All right. I right, wave. Hop in. Wait, let me get wave. Hold on. Let me get these people. Yeah, this dude sounds like a Mexican. He just didn't want to admit that or something. All right. Um, wave. What's going on, man? Wave. Hop on, dude. Okay. He's not saying Thank nothing. Thank you so much, much, Mr. Tariq. It's an honor there to speak with you, sir. How you doing, Wave? Where, where you from, Wave? I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm in the U.S. That's from? about as detailed as I'll get. But I'm a, I'm a, a white uh, American Republican. There you go. There you go. Uh, what part of Europe is your family from? Uh, well, I've got uh, on my mom's side, I've got um, Irish, mostly. And German. And yeah, German, right? And my, and my father is, yeah, there's some German, yeah. And on my father's side, it's mostly just um, East European. Yeah, a lot of white Republicans claim German, and I noticed that. But um, so what's on your mind, Wayne? Well, you know, um, well, for starters, I, I I do I do support uh, reparations in some form. I'm not exactly sure which form or how much money that would be or how that would work, but I do support it. I believe that the black community community is owed uh, some some debt for the past wrongdoings. But I'm but, curious, what's that? But there's oh. a but there. <laughs> well, the but is the one thing I'm trying to understand. Um, I understand what a tether is and how you know they're kind. They don't really fall under the. Uh, FBA umbrella because you know they kind of migrated from from other countries they weren't actually like direct slaves in the United States right, right? Mm -hmm. um, or direct descendants of slaves but right. um, what I what I'm trying to understand is do you draw a distinction between um, uh, descendants of white slave owners and black slave owners or do you feel that reparations oh. are owed to descendants of black slave owners as well I know it was a very small number. But I'm just wondering if those are included. And thank you so oh. much for for allowing me the microphone right. and, and to ask a question, sir. Right. Okay, and uh, let me let me tackle those things. Um, number one, the black slave owners. It was a very small number, and the black slave owners. What they were doing was different from the white slave owners because many black people would buy their relatives out of slavery. So on paper. They were, quote unquote, slave owners, but they were just buying their family for the most part. Now, you did have a few handful of um, mixed race people who were colored, 
who many of those guys had white fathers and they were slave owners and they had non-relatives. It was a very small percentage of those. But for the most part, they were buying their family. So it's a different thing. And also the the pointing out each individual slave owner, we're not doing that. We're looking at the entire U.S. government because the United States government as a whole was complicit in slavery. We couldn't get out of slavery because of the U.S. government. The U.S. government had the Fugitive Slave Act, where they would go across state lines, bringing back black people who escaped bondage. The U.S. government sent in the military in places like Florida to try to retrieve a lot of black people who ran away down there. So the U.S. government was completely complicit, and they are the ones who are responsible. So that's that's the answer to that. That makes sense, Wave? Uh, yeah, yeah, that does. I, I I can see what you what you mean by that. Um, yeah. Now, my last question, if you don't mind, may I ask a second question? Go ahead, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if you feel it's worth drawing a distinction. I happen to feel it's very worth drawing a distinction between Caucasians and uh, the Jewish whites, because only because historically, and do you agree with this that? Uh, Lar the, the the transatlantic slave trade was largely funded and organized and operated by Jews. Am I mistaken in that? Do you believe that as well? Why don't we have Jewish last names as black people, foundational black Americans, and why do we practice Christianity and not Judaism as foundational black Americans? Um, well, they were the ones kind of funding the trade and running you know paying, paying for the ships and kind of profiting from the from the business not so much necessarily the ones in the states owning the slaves you know what i mean maybe that maybe i'm wrong about that they didn't have a bunch of how come they didn't have a, they got the black christian church how come they don't have a bunch of black synagogues that we were forced to go to because we had to go to black churches and study christianity and the bible why didn't they force us to read the torah if there were so many jewish slave owners yeah, that's a good a good point. Uh, although, again, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of distinguishing between slave owners and slave traders, but I guess the ones trading were usually owning as well. I don't know. I'm kind yeah. of imagining the traders as the ones profiting from the business and the owners are the ones, you All know. All of them profited, sir. That's why we don't make a distinction. They okay. uh, Anybody classified as white, profit. well, they were profiting. And the slave owners, whatever religious background or even ethnic background, you had Scottish, Irish, German, Italian, Jewish, all of them who were slave owners were practicing anti-Black racism. So us making a distinction about their different ethnic, ethnic differences, inconsequential. That's why we don't even bother with it. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, man. That really helps me understand your, your position a bit better. Um, yes. Yeah, so all thank right. you for the time. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we don't. I, I don't. We don't get into that. That this whole where they're trying to spin it. Well, it was really all the Jewish people. No, we. They made us read Bibles. These were Christians. These Christian white supremacists. Yeah, there were some Jewish people who were complicit too, but it was the Christian white supremacists. You're not going to just pawn that off. See, people love playing hot potato. They, well, and that's another trick you don't fall for, family. That's another trick you don't fall for when people try to play hot potato on racism. Well, it was the Christians. No, it was really the Jews. It was the Republicans. No, it was the Democrats. <clears throat> Just like they did at the DNC. And I keep pointing this out. I've pointed this out for the last week. When they paraded the Central Park Five out, the Democrats brought them to the DNC to go in on Trump, they brought them out and, oh, Trump put out that ad and that caused us to go to jail. And the DNC and the Democrats love pointing out Trump and that Central Park Five ad. Well, he didn't name them, but that ad about the Central Park Five. And the irony is, and I keep pointing this out, it was Democrats who prosecuted those guys. That was a Democrat movement. The Democrats lied on those gentlemen. The Democrats wrongly accused those men and put them in prison unjustly. That was a 100% Democratic thing. And for them to sit up here and try to act like their hands are clean and then point the finger at Trump, who was a damn Democrat at the time, too. 
He was following the Democrats' lead. They were all complicit in it. They're not going to sit here and play hot potato. We got to stop letting them play that hot potato game, family. The Democrats are real good at that, doing something racist and then hiding their hand and pointing the finger at somebody else. There's a lot of left-wing anti-black racists out here. They've been on that. They always try to get us to give props to those white feminists, the Susan B. Anthony's and the Elizabeth um, Cantons and all of these people. Those women were harsh anti-black racists. Those women were hardcore racists. A lot of the white LGBT, who they make it seem like they're very liberal. Go watch my movie, Buck Breaking. That's one of my most famous movies, talking about the racism from historically from the white LGBT community going in on their racism, all the racist, weird stuff that they've been doing, and they're supposed to be liberal. Hell, Jeffrey Dahmer was a Democrat. He was liberal. Ed Buck was a Democrat donor, and they're bringing dead black men out of his house every other damn week, and the liberal media were hush-hush about that. You see? Uh, we don't play that game. We don't let the Democrats sit up here and just point the finger at everybody else claiming they're the racists over there. So don't support them because they are the real racists. No, you're just as, com- as complicit. When we look at many of these cities where black people are being harmed by race soldiers, these are Democrat cities. When Freddie Gray got harmed, Democrat city. Mike Brown, Democrat city. Trayvon Martin, Democrat city down there in Florida. By the way, the Democrats over there running. Eric Garner, Democrat City. George Floyd, Democrat City, state. You see, all of these things happen under the Democrats' watch in Democrat areas. And then they sit on their hands and not do anything until the community turns up. You see? So, yeah, they have to be called out. Shout out to everybody in here. By the way, we got an event at the Hidden History Museum. I want y'all to come kick it with me Saturday, September 14th. Um, We got September Soul Saturday. Got a lot of great comics. We're going to have great food, great music, drinks, the whole shebang. It's going to be a nice vibe. Go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com to get tickets for that and join me. Hidden History Museum dot com ladies and gentlemen um what's going on Bob? can y'all hear me my my, oh, my my wi-fi is tripping a little bit i think my wi-fi went out for a minute hold on let me see some let me do something with my wi-fi my wi-fi went out let me get my my phone data going on here ladies and gentlemen i had a little y'all bear with me one second because the in my area, the Wi-Fi has been acting janky real lately. Janky lately. I don't know why. Hold on one second. Let me re-record the space. One second. Y'all bear with me one second. I think I'm, I think I'm good to go. Hold on. All right. There we go. I think we're good. Are we good? There we go. I'm good. All right. Let me get a couple of more calls in here. Y'all raise your hand if you're ready to get on. If you're ready to get on, raise your hand. If you are ready to get on, raise your hand. Let me know if you are in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Let me see. Let's get freedom first. There's freedom first in the building. All right. All right, freedom, what's up? And where's that bad built chick? Did she leave? Because I looked at more of her pictures. Her body is built worse than I thought. Hey, 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 what's up, brother Tariq? What's up, Freedom? How are you, bro? All right, I just wanted to uh, bring up two points, two, uh, two opinions about, you know, why these folks are always trying to make the distinction between the Jews and the white people. I think it got more so to do with, like, white supremacy versus white nationalism. Yeah. Like, um, because any white person could be a white supremacist, but for, you know, because of the, uh, because of the Nazi influence, uh, um, no Jews can be a white nationalist. Okay. So that, that's, that's my opinion on that. And, um, 
And the whole thing about the, um, you know, people call and we don't have enough votes in the house to do this and do that. Um, I was, I mean, the, the, the DNC can make these things like, um, like platform issues, like uh, reparations or whatever. And there's nothing stopping them from making like these uh, White House commissions on these issues too. So they don't have anything to do with like seats in the house. All oh, right, right, yeah. And I'm I'm not trying to hear none of their excuses. Every time when it comes to us, boy, my hands are tied. All oh, the house, they didn't approve it. The assembly was tripping. They get to everybody's just pointing fingers at everybody. But the illegal immigrants come over and the bag is right there. So I'm not give me the same deal you're giving the illegal immigrants. They didn't have to jump through hoops and neither should we. That's where it is. Let's stop letting these people play in our faces with this stuff. All right. Uh, I'm gonna give one more good call. Let me where the sisters at? Let me talk to the women. And I'm not talking about the bad bill chick. Um, where are the sisters at who got some sense? Yeah, because I looked at more of the bad bill chicks' pictures. Oh boy, they're worse than what I thought. Oh, that shape is a fool. That woman's shape. That woman, is she shaped like Bookman from Good Times? That's a horrible shape. And she's wearing those revealing clothes with a shape like that. Ma'am. No, why? You need to get back in here and get this work. You know, wearing spandex biker shorts. Ma'am, no. You, you built like Andre the Giant. That don't look right. Coming in here talking greasy with a shape like that. I, I was going to post some of her pictures on the Jumbotron, but that would have been too cruel. That would have been way too cruel. She looked like a pit bull with a lace front. It's a weird, just weird face and shape. It's weird, man. How your shape get that janky? You need to go steal some Ozempic. I know you can't afford it. Let's go steal some from somewhere. Just run up in there and run out. All right. Um, anyway, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me get a. I want to get one more good call in here. I see the alchemist in here. Um, alchemist, you you don't really have anything to say, man. And I, I I'm not in the mood for tether babble. You just kind of want to tether babble, and I'm not in the mood for that. Um, you're trying to get some clout. What's up, Yoshi G? I see you down there, beloved. I'm looking down here. I'm, I'm shape watching. I'm trying to see if any bad shapes are out here, so we can block them. I don't. I don't want no bad shapes calling up. <laughs> I don't want bad shape energy. Oh goodness. Um, Come on, give me one. I'm trying to give one more good one here. Uh, y'all raise your hand, man. Raise your hand if y'all ready. Um, who's this person? The prosecutor? All right, let's get the prosecutor in here. The prosecutor, hop on. I'm good, sir. How are you, brother? I'm doing very well. First, I want to thank you for... For everything that you're doing, uh, yeah. I really, I really appreciate you a lot. Yes, I appreciate. On, you. on X, you and I, <laughs> we've had our back and forth uh, exchange. We did. Yeah, of course we. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> when did we have a back and forth? What did we talk about? I think we were talking about uh, some of this uh, reparation issues and uh, this, just a whole lot, a whole bunch of issues that had to go with this. How long ago did, did we have this conversation? That was like uh, it was like six, seven months ago. Oh yeah, I wouldn't. I couldn't remember. I talked to so many people. So did you oppose reparations? What was your vibe with reparations? No, kind of. We're we're kind of talking about the merits of it all, and I had my own position on that. I think you said that it seems I wasn't making a lot of sense, but. I think at the end, I've ended up right now, to be very honest, agreeing with you on a whole lot of things. We've become a, 
kind of uh, almost on the same page in most of these very topical issues. And uh, I can see your spirit. Um, me personally, I am a, I'm a son of an, of an immigrant. My parents migrated here from, uh, my mom is from Mozambique and my dad is Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born in Queens you, you, in New York. Where were you born? You were born over there somewhere. Where were you born? No, I was born in Queens. I was born in a South Ozone Park in New York. So you were born in New York? Yes, I was. And boy, you still got the accent, boy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was born in New York. And uh, then well, did, they, I grew did they take you back over there to raise you? Yes, they did. I, okay. I grew up back home like almost 15 years. I was back home in Mozambique. Got it. How, how old were you? Were they <laughs> Yeah, we we left because uh, then my dad was working with contractor firm and uh, with the UN peacekeeping operation. So we all went back because every time he kept traveling all over the place. So we just decided to go back to my grandmother, and it was one of the greatest experiences of our lives. Because then how old were you when you went back, that's what I'm asking. How old were you when like like two, one? How old were you? No, 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 no I was four. Four. Okay, got it. Yeah, <clears> yeah I can tell. Yeah, you, you could not have been raised in New York with that. It's too <laughs> you raised on you in your homeland, definitely. I could tell. Yeah, but definitely we also come into the US almost every other. We're kind of almost half half in a year here in the US and half in a year back home in Africa. Well, well yeah, they made sure that you had that US citizenship. That was the thing. So yeah. I mean, I mean being born here, we already have our US uh, uh, citizenship and things like that. Do you hear so they can they can have you anchored here? So that um, you would already have that automatic citizenship, right? Uh, that's what Akon's family did. They made sure they brought him over here to be born, and then took him back over there to Senegal. So a lot of people do that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So my 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 feelings, and this is what I have uh, observed. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a developer. I'm I'm into real estate, and I mean I do a lot of. Uh, I have two, three different companies, manufacturing companies, and we are doing very well, but. What I've come to observe, maybe this will be very different from other people's experience, is that I'm from a very democratic family. My dad, my mom, everybody. We have like more than 30 people, 30 voting age uh, adults. Uh, I have five kids, my brothers, everybody. We have grown up kids. Brother, uh, brother, brother, you're giving me a whole episode of Roots. All right, you give me your Kunta Kente origin story, brother. Okay, let me, I'll I, I have you call up somebody. Brother, I don't want to hear Roots Part 5. I don't know where brother was going with it. I'm trying to rock with him, but he's like, I am from Mozambique. I grew up in a village. I was in New York. I have five brothers, and my grandmother raised me with Joloff. Okay, brother, shit. I don't know where you're going with it, brother. You just, you're just giving me your... Kunta Kente origin story, brother. Damn. I don't know where you're going with it, brother. Y'all got to get to the point. And uh, 300 years ago, I was, my great great grandfather was captured. He was outside of his village doing manhood training. And he was making bush meat and he got captured and put on his sheep. And, okay, shit, brother. Go, go, holla at Alex Haley or somebody to write a book about it. I don't know what you you saying. You just all over the place. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. No disrespect, but damn, you know. Oh goodness, goodness gracious! I try to give everybody a voice, but damn, if I'm not trying to hear a mini series, just get to the point. All right, because he, boy, this brother was very long winded. I don't know where he was going with it. All right, how many people we got in here? Listen, family, um, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, get your tickets to join me at the Hidden History Museum in a couple of weeks, September 14th. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com, the album featuring the hit single that everybody's talking about, Grinding for a Green Car. That's the name of the album, and that's the name of the new single from my production group, Flex Tro. That's going to be on all of the streaming platforms Friday, September 13th. And the pre-order will go on sale 
this Friday, or well, well, Thursday night. So everybody get the pre-sale, pre-order the Grinding for a Green Card album. We got some phenomenal songs on there, including Musty Tether, Grinding for a Green Card, and we got a great song called Forehead Forever. That's one of my favorites on there. We got a lot of great songs on there. Um, but anyway, guys, let me get up out of here. It's been real. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Go to MicrophoneCheck.com. Go to RootWorkStyle.com to get the...